church. Family. Theology. News. Entertainment. Evangelism. If it's Christian, then we're talking about it. This is the Mike Charleston Podcast. Hey everyone, this is Mike Charleston. This is another Monday, and this is the Mike Charleston Podcast. And today I am with my wife, Sarah. Hello, everybody. And Larry is not with us. Larry? What are you doing? He's actually busy doing work, and he didn't really feel comfortable with the subject at hand. I guess he's feeling a little stressed. I don't know. I, no, I, I don't know. He just We're, we're going to be talking about stress today. So you probably already know that because it's in the title. But we're going to be talking about stress. But before we get there, talking about stress, <laughs> what about our week this week? Huh? That was a pretty, pretty stressful week this week. Well, I don't know about stressful, but no, it wasn't very really stressful. It was very so. busy. Uh, we decided to, if if you don't know, our, our we got a strange house, <laughs> and very strange. We got a couple of different buildings. This was an old cabinet shop that it was an old barn that was a cabinet shop that turned into a house, and so we have these buildings that we don't know what to do with. So we have this big warehouse in the back, and it's a, it's nice. It's a, it, it does its job right. But they just put like some OSB board, tried to paint it, and and it's exposed to the weather, so it is rotting out. And right. so we got to do something. And the dogs have decided to chew the bottoms, and now they're getting out. So we really had to do something. Right, too many holes every day trying to find where they got out this time. So. Too many holes. So, so we decided it's time to finally just fix it, and let's just go ahead and do it. And I was all right with just cutting some of the bad stuff out, putting new stuff in, putting siding in, but I opened it up and I said, especially to you and Jeremiah, like, what do we, what could we do? And you guys wanted to make a porch out there, have a have covered a, patio, covered patio. That's fair. And wall in the one section and just have a covered patio. And I thought that's fine. That, that works. But then I said, well, then how about put a little outdoor kitchen there, which may, may not happen at this point. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? So what have, we, what have we been doing today? Um, well, today, since we had it all emptied out. Yeah, we well, yeah, the, first, that's what you spent, like, all day, Friday or Saturday? Friday, Friday. we did a little bit. Saturday, we did the rest. We emptied it all because I told the kids, I said, once we empty it. Empty then, all the junk? Well, that's a piece of junk. Why don't you just go throw it away? Except for you didn't throw it away. We put it in the garage. <laughs> yeah, pretty much mostly. Well, we did throw away a little bit. We oh, got sure. a couple bags, but... Anyway, there's more junk to be thrown away for sure. But we emptied it because I said once you empty it, then it's all this big open space and the inspiration can flow. And that's that's yes, what happened. That is so true. Once we got it all emptied and we went in and came up with a new plan that we'll see if it works out the way we're thinking. But yes. so today we we went out there and took down some walls. We took down some walls, left the studs right now, and then we go. We got to rebuild a wall eventually. But right now we were taking down walls, and that was fun. And, and Josh was trying to make a video on it. So it's not going to be on this YouTube channel, but it's going to be on a different YouTube channel. Maybe, maybe we'll put I don't know what we're going to do. We may not even put it on like the other project we didn't put on. But anyway, and if you are watching on YouTube, thank you for watching on YouTube. And if you're not watching on YouTube, if you're listening on a podcast, we do have it on YouTube where you can watch us if you want to see what we look like. Uh, we might make you cry, but no, the, the, you can watch us. Uh, hopefully we have other materials we're going to be putting on there soon. So go ahead and go to the YouTube channel. It's going to be in the description on the podcast and we can, uh, you can subscribe and then we'll have other videos up. It's not just going to be the radio show in the future. Hopefully we'll have some, some other kind of teachings and stuff that's going to be associated with that. But, um, anyway, that was what's been going on. We've been, kind of de deconstructing and we're going to be in the right. mode of constructing pretty soon yep. so a lot of hammering a lot of uh knocking down things so it's kind of uh, demolition is the fun part yeah everybody wants to get involved in that oh we can tear this wall down sure right. we'll go for it yeah so our subject today is stress and how to deal with it and how is it good for us <laughs> is it uh, obviously it's not good for us right? right but how do we deal with it how do we uh, is is there something we can do about it? Well, the project that we're about to 
We've done many projects in our house. Pretty much. I think they all come with their fair amount of stress somewhere along the line. But you don't think I ever am stressed out? No, I've never seen you stressed. I We've know, been through some weird. things, but I can't say that I've ever seen you stressed. And I try to convince her that I do get stressed out at times. I just must hide it pretty well. well. Yeah, but then you say, well, what does stress look like? Like, you don't even know. So I'm like, well, you can't be stressed out if you don't even know what it is. Well, I just want to clarify because <laughs> I, everyone else is talking about how stressed out they are. And I'm like, well... Chill out, man. Just relax. And I guess that's too simplistic. So, mm. but we'll talk about it. It's it's fine. Um, it, the Bible does cover some of these things, and, and in our society, we shouldn't be as stressed as we are because we have so many conveniences, and yet we are stressed. Yeah, unfortunately, as things have supposedly gotten easier for us, we've only gotten more stressed. Yes, because when you say stressed, and I keep saying like. I don't understand what you mean by stress. So is that like this? You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Is it something like that? <laughs> something <laughs> so, like that, yeah. Joshua gave me the little controller today, so I might be doing a little bit more of the, the sounders. Uh, no, I probably that's probably it. That's probably it for the day. No, but anyway, so anyway, speaking of Joshua, why don't we go ahead and get out of here? This step, We don't have that much more. No, nope, just it. helping the Tates with their wedding here pretty soon. Yep. That's always fun. So let's get out of here and then we'll get into our subject, stress and how to deal with it. You're listening to the Mike Charleston Podcast. All right, everyone, we are back, and we just, why don't we just chill to the next episode here, is we're going to be talking about stress. Are you nervous about this, babe? I am a little bit nervous. You're a little nervous. You're always nervous when you get on the mic. Yes, always. Yeah, when I get up to speak, you always ask me, you don't look nervous at all. I'm I'm nervous. I get very nervous when I speak. Okay, but maybe in front of a crowd, but not for a podcast. No, not for the podcast. For podcast, I'm just talking to you. We're just here in our room here, and Josh was in here. There's, I don't have to impress anyone. Mm. Not that I'm impressing anyone when I get up in public and speak, but when you have 350 people looking at you, and it's bright lights, and you, you can't really see, it can be intimidating, and it, it's kind of nerve-wracking. When you know what you're talking about, it does help. It does. But still, the minute you kind of slip or you forget something, it, it, you, it time seems like forever. And right. everyone else is like, it wasn't that bad. But for you, you're like, that was, that was terrible. So anyway, we are going to be talking about stress. And maybe we'll have some graphics on here because we're going to have a lot of different things here. But stress is a big th- issue in America. Huge. Everyone. Huge. When you ask someone, it, now I know this is kind of like a saying, kind of like when you say, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Or, hey, what's up? Hey, not much. We're not really telling the truth. You right. know, if we're dying inside, we don't say, I'm dying inside. And we say, no, I'm fine. I'm we're good. good. Yep. So when someone says, hey, man, how are you doing? Busy. Busy. Busy, busy. That's our, that, busy. Yeah, we're very busy. So that's uh, that's our go-to answer is busy. Well, is it to be that way? Should we really be busy? Well, it depends. I, I don't think it's necessarily wrong to be busy, but I do think that what at makes least us in America, busy? We're, we're too busy often. Yeah, we, we talked about this many years ago, and a lot of, uh, even Michael Thornton was mentioning it at church the other other Sunday, and He's like, just imagine, like, 100 years ago, like, the ladies had to go to the river. And I'm like, maybe that was 150 years ago, because 100 years ago, we're getting older. Right. But, you yeah. know, 150 years, they had to go to the, the, they had to go to the river, and they had to do all their laundry by hand, and it would, we have a washing machine. All you have to do is throw it in there, and it, it takes care of it. Right. We don't have to go out and hunt our food always. If we go hunt our food, it's for fun. Right. You know, yeah. and, and and we're not stressed out about our, our food coming in today. We just, no. if if there's nothing, if we, dad's going fishing and he didn't catch anything, ah, just go to Walmart, go pick something up, you know, right. or it's, most people aren't in dire straits like they used to be. No. And yet we're stressed out and we need to go to counselors and therapists and there's, and there's just books all over the place how to simplify how to slow down yes. and we're still what we is can't do the it. problem so anyway how would you decide how would you define stress because i am not very good at defining stress 
Um, well. Oh, you're going to read it. Sure. Stress is the feeling of being overwhelmed or unable to cope with mental or emotional pressure. Okay. What happened about this one though? What, what was uh, that? Okay. Well, okay. So the term stress was borrowed from the field of physics by one of the fathers of stress research, Hans Selye. Selye, something, something like that. In yeah. physics, stress describes the force that produces strain on a physical body. For example, bending a piece of metal until it snaps. Snap. Snaps because of the force or stress exerted on it. So we know what stress is in physics. You know, you produce, we, we experience that with wood. Right. And when you're, you, you bend it, bend it, it stresses and then it breaks. So I guess right. that's where we get the term because right. how much can you take before you just break? You, you, you just yeah. burst and you're just like, that's it. I can't take it anymore. I'm out of here. <laughs> exactly. or, this is, this is no more. So that's what causes stress. So what you were saying is that stress is the feeling of being overwhelmed or unable to cope with mental or emotional pressure, right? Are we should we be able to be able to manage emotional and mental pressure? Well, we should be able to, yes. but most many people don't feel like they can. And I know, like I, I've come to you before multiple times and said I feel overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. I've never said I feel stressed out, but then when I read that, I was like, oh, I guess overwhelmed. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah, overwhelmed is like you are arguing. You're not arguing. Discussing with the da- our daughters, um, if. Being, uh, what was the feeling? Nervous. Yeah, being nervous is being stressful. And I'm like, yes, being nervous, being overwhelmed. Those are words for being stressed in some way. Right. You're being stressed in some form or fashion. It may not be, oh, that much. But it doesn't have to be a certain thing like a a death in the family. But there are certain things that are going to bring us to stress no matter what. Right. Yeah. And you came up with a few of them. Yeah, I did. This well, isn't exhaustive by any stretch. No, because after writing it, I'm like, wow, I can think of many more. But the f- really, the f- well, oh yeah, like a- well, I'm just saying. Um, yeah, okay, okay. Um, so the first list was causes of stress that you can't avoid. So these are things that we can't help. Okay, so like illness. Right. So somebody gets diagnosed with cancer or right. diabetes or something, and that's right. going to bring stress and well, a family. Well, even on a simplistic level, just that if you know I had the flu, I'm not, I didn't get cancer, you know, like right. th- that's really emotional or wow, right. I got cancer. Okay. Yeah. We need to, but even if uh, you get the flu or just a cold oh, sure. and your body is being stressed, so right. you're stressed in the fact that you are being brought down. You're not as, you're not on top of your game maybe. Right. And or for a mom when her kids are sick. Yes. That's going to bring a lot more oh, stress man, yes. and she can't help it. I mean, you can't help that kids are going to get sick. No, so. that's true. Unless you don't believe in sickness. So then, uh, <laughs> But anyway, another thing that would bring uh, stress, unwanted stress, is a new baby. Right. Yeah, well. I'm pregnant. Woo! Right. So baby's (laughs) coming. And well, as we know, life changes when a baby comes. Big time. And And, uh, before and after. Just the, the announcement. If the guy wasn't expecting it, and all of a sudden right. you're, you, that could be stress. Right. And all afterward, the things, all the things you need, and um, just the adjusting to when you bring the baby home from the hospital, or you have the baby at home, whatever you do. So that period of adjustment can be big. So yes, indeed. Definitely and can bring stress. What else? Um, Can't see it. New job. Sorry. Yeah, new job. <laughs> a new job can be stressful. It could be a good thing, but it could be stressful. It's a new environment. It's something new. Right. So you got so a lot. You got a you lot. You gave to me learn. the stress test the other day, and I was like, "This is a stupid test." It, it, it's yeah, it was kind of a silly test. Not a stress <laughs> test like for your heart, but this was just to determine if new things affect you more or right. Like what stresses you out the most? And I, I, I still don't even. For one, if I have to determine the level of stress for a particular thing, isn't that defeating the purpose? And like, yeah. well, then I know that I'm stressed. <laughs> like, right. whatever. It's it a is stupid kind, test. It is kind of funny. Anyway, so, so a new job, a new house. New house, Moving yeah. into a new place, a new city, a new job, a new house, even right. if it's in the same, you, right. you've got just, to adjust. Just moving in itself oh, my goodness, can be yes. very stressful. Yep. So. Yeah, just watching your parents <laughs> move. Yeah. Uh, I was stressed rough. watching them, so I can imagine that they uh, were pretty stressed. Yeah. Uh, added responsibility. What do you mean by that? Um, well, for like, for example, like you say, my parents, or you have a, um, a parent that moves in with you because they're sick or whatever. So now I have an added responsibility. I need to go take care of them. Sure. So it's going to mean, you know, multiple times, take them to the doctor doing whatever. That's an added responsibility that you can't necessarily help, 
But it's going to bring stress because it's or just more Or when you move to a new to house do. and instead of having an acre, you have three acres. And oh, right. More yard more. to keep up. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. You need more kids. So anyway, what was the last one you came up with was change in routine. What do you mean by that? I mean, I think well, it's I mean, pretty self-explanatory. But it is. I mean, kind of like when you have a new baby. The routine, everything changes. It's like now we used to do this every morning, but now everything's going to be Or like when I different. come home and I'm like, we're going to change everything that we're doing. And you're like, yeah, oh boy. Sometimes that can bring stress too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that too much anymore. No. Uh, I kind of respect you a little bit more than just coming home and be like, we're going to change everything. We're no longer going to do this anymore. And we're going to do this. Uh, that can be very stressful. Right. And yeah. and let me let me just say this before we get into some other things, that guys, we need to be... What was that study you just said? You were reading right before we went on air here that... About how many men are stressed. Right. You asked me how many men do I think are stressed, and I'm like, actually, when it comes to jobs, I think guys are a lot more stressed, but when it comes to home life, I don't think guys are stressed hardly at all. Right. Yeah, hardly at all. I don't all. think so. Uh, but you said that like 30% of guys... Are 30, 30 million, million men in America would say they are stressed out that is 30 million that's 10 percent 10 percent of people or 10 percent would be men that's men so i mean you have to right 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 right. not kids women i get it but still 10 percent of men said they're stressed out now guys should be more stressed out than women because the responsibility of leading a home it falls directly on the husband the the man of the house he is to to he's supposed to bring he's supposed to be the breadwinner he's supposed to bring the money into the house he's supposed to be the spiritual leader of the house he is the spiritual leader of the house right (laughs) and he he's supposed to he's supposed to be a good spiritual leader um and he's supposed to be the, the the priest the prophet and the provider right right and so all those things should bring a little bit more stress on the ladies unfortunately it seems like guys just let the ladies take over in that area. Maybe they, they're just good delegators, so they delegate the stress to their wives. That's right. You can take the stress. <laughs> but no, the, the, the not saying that the ladies have to, the guys always have to do the Bible study in their home or devotions or whatever you do in your home, but the the responsibility is at the foot of the, the husbands. If, right. if they want, like we talked about earlier, and kind of while we're talking, going back a little bit, let's rewind a little bit. The The... So first we talked about, this is part of a series here that we've been talking about lately, the the first thing being how to build a godly culture, right, right in your home, and being being strong and being firm and, and cutting things out, or right. whatever you've got to do, create your godly culture. Well, within that, most likely it's going to lead to homeschooling. Maybe not. Maybe you decide you're going to do private schooling or, home, or uh, public school, whatever you're going to do, but homeschooling is generally where we went. Right. And so we kind of went through the nuts and bolts of homeschooling. Part of the problem there then is it can turn into legalism. legalism. And so the be wary of the the, the the faults of falling into legalism right. and convictions. What's the difference there? So that was part three. If you haven't listened to those, go back and listen to them. Those are really good and really important. And then well, last week we talked about... What, restart like yeah what if you were a little late in the game can you actually restart what if you messed up is there and there's hope and the, and we talked about that but right. here is just come practical things of being so you've you've got those convictions you've got those the vision and you're 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 ready and you get into it and then 2 years in you've kind of gotten that lull you gotten that rut and you are starting to get stressed because you kind of right. lost you, you lost sight of the vision somewhat. You've delegated too much to your wife. You uh, let's be honest, because a lot of the wives are going to come to their husbands and just be like, "I can't handle this. I can't do it anymore." Right. That's yeah. that's usually the the case. I don't know of many guys who are like, "I can't do this anymore." Yeah. Uh, we let the the wives uh, take on a good bit of it. So the the causes of stress that so sometimes those are the causes the ones that. We we just listed up. Maybe we'll put it back on there. On the on, if you're listening and watching on YouTube, the illness, new baby, new job, new house, added responsibility, change in routine. Some of those things are not necessarily our fault. Right, our things, bro- things out of our control. Right. Now here's a couple of here's a, about nine things that we came up with that causes stress that that we bring on ourselves because most of the stress in our life is actually brought on by ourselves, right? Yep, pretty much. Like a flood, we can't help a flood. No, but we can help, we can help what we do during that flood. Right. But here's a couple of things: too many commitments. Yeah. 
So, yes. like, early on in our marriage, we decided we're not going to be doing all the baseball, soccer, uh, music lessons. We're just going to raise our kids. And maybe it was because we didn't have any money and we were lazy. <laughs> maybe that helped. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, we, we just decided we're not going to be running around. Right. So, too many commitments. That's one. Well, how mm-hmm. about number two? <clears throat> Overscheduling activities. Isn't that kind of the same kind thing? Kind of the same thing, yeah, pretty much. But... It, there's a lot of good things that we can be involved in. The problem is we can't do it all. No. So, and sometimes we try and sometimes, you know, we think, oh, well, that's a really good thing. I think I'll, I'll join the group or I'll commit to do whatever. And then we find that we're stressed because we're trying to do too much. 24 hours in a day. Still yeah. only 24 hours in a day. Right. And even way back in the, well, I don't know, 150 years ago, 200, the pioneers had 24 hours in a day. Right. And they didn't have time to complain about being stressed no. but no. uh but anyway so our over scheduling activities we are we want to do everything right. and we can't yep and then not enough time just like we just talked about right. there's still only 24 hours yeah so. we, we complain about ha- not having enough time right even though we have power mowers <laughs> we've got right. vehicles that take us from here to there we don't have to take a horse right you know we don't have to walk yep. um we even take planes places yep. and uh so We have a lot of conveniences that's supposed to help us have more free time. Right. And then we fill our free time with things that bind us and and, and control us. Yep, pretty much. Unrealistic expectations. What do you mean by this? Well, I guess when you think about all the things that you hope to do, I guess when you talk about that vision that you create, so it's like we want to be able to do everything. We want to be able to... Raise our kids and teach them the Bible and teach them about ministry and homestead and and plant a garden and start our own business. Right. And we just, you can't do it all. No. Realistically, you may not be able to do it all. If you can do it all, props to you. But (laughs) there's a good bit that probably isn't going to happen. You have to pick and choose and and cut some things out. That'll help. Social media. I know this is your big one. Um, just the, the time lost on it or from comparing ourselves to everyone else. We have to remember <laughs> that to, Facebook is a make-believe world. Right. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a snapshot. It's a picture. And people say, oh, we had a blast today. But reality is it was like a five-second get-together, here, smile, and then the rest of it was miserable. <laughs> it, it wasn't fun. Right. And, and I, I'm always reminded, I might get in trouble for saying this, but I know there's some legitimate people out there that put things on Facebook, but I do know that there are times where people are like, it's kind of a joke in our house that if someone posts something about their husband or their wife being so awesome, I'm like, oh no, their marriage <laughs> right. is in trouble. Yeah. Uh, Cause it just seems like the, the people that they, they like have to put on a front and Facebook is a good front. It's it's a storefront. And here here is here's what we're doing in our life. We want to look busy. We want to look important. We want to look right. like we're we're active and important. And I love my wife. I love my husband. I love you know my kids. And then you meet them, and you're like you hate your kids. And what what, what happened with that picture that you put over there? It's it's all make believe. I right. should say all make believe, but they're, 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 you don't want to get caught up and uh, caught up with the the you don't want to keep up with the Joneses there in Facebook and be like, well, they seem like they have it all together, they seem like they have it, you right. know, all. Well, trust me, they're they're humans too, right. and they're probably dealing with the same issues. Yeah. And if you live on Facebook, you probably have a lot of stress because you're ignoring everything else. Pretty much, I mean, that's the thing when you talk about this time on social media. Everybody complains that they don't have enough time. Right. So we're all short on time. That's why we're all stressed because we don't have time to do all the things that we've committed to do or we want to do or we think are good to do. So we're all complaining that we don't have time. But when you get on something like Facebook or whatever social media you use, time just goes so fast. And then you turn and you're like, I don't know why I couldn't fit everything in my day that I was hoping to fit. Right. And just so, analyze everything you did. Right. So yeah. it just drains away your time and that's what you need. That's right. So here's a good one. This was practical, poor planning. It could just be that uh, you feel stressed because you're just not a good planner. Right. And yeah. this is me. I'm not a very good planner. I'm a last minute type. I procrastinate. Last minute. I, I have everything in my head, but I don't know how to like organ. I'm not a very good organizer. Yeah. And so you're very, you're, you're much better at that than mm-hmm. I am. Maybe not that good, but you're better than I am. Mm, but okay. poor planning. That if you have you don't have a good plan in place, it, it could seem chaotic. Right. And chaos is stress. Right. Yeah, you don't yeah, want that. Pretty much. Complaining. Complaining. This is a what do you mean by this one here? Well, I mean, if you start complaining, then you're 
not going to be thinking positively about whatever it is that you're doing. So if, you know, like we went out to the warehouse to work this morning and if, if I just start complaining about how long this is taking or how hard it is, or this is going to be... No one wants to hear that. Right. Right. It's just, it's going to create stress. It's going to create stress in me. It's going to create stress in you because you realize I'm really not happy to be here and be doing this. And it's just... We're not going fast enough, so let's hurry up. And then someone gets hurt and then more stress. And it just, it's not very good. But yeah, so complaining, and which is part of the answer, which we're we're jumping ahead a little bit, but part of the answer is being thankful. Right. It's hard to be thankful and complaining. Yeah. At the same time as we exactly. talk about at church. Uh, so number eight here is fear. We might not measure up. Right. Because sometimes things that we put on our plates or on our schedule is because we want to be as good as some other family or somebody else. And right. so we add things and so we're trying to live up to what they are. And it doesn't matter what they are. You right. need to decide where God wants you to be. And yeah, we talked about that a couple of podcasts ago, and, and we'll get into it a little bit later with some of the answers here. But that you, that's going to happen every once in a while. You're going to compare right. yourself. You see someone that's like got it all together. It's only natural to be like, man, that is nice. Right. I, I mean, uh, we look through. There's there's parts of our house that are really clean and really nice. But go to our garage. It is, uh, and then there are other parts. There's other parts. It's just not very organized. And I wish I was better at organizing. And you're a lot better than I am. But mm-hmm. even you probably wish you were a little bit better at organizing. And oh, yeah. uh, but anyway, so fear. The the last one we came up with lack of rest. Was this a hint here for for you? Like, well, I I do just think it is important for us to take time to rest. It's yes. okay to take a break. And sometimes you need to schedule that in. Like we're not going to, we can't fill every hour of the day with more things and more things and more things. You've got to just take no. time to just No, chill. we were just talking the other day that what if we, what, why did God create sleep? You know, mm-hmm. that is weird. Like he didn't have to, like we could just be living every hour of the day. And I know it's hard to imagine. We would just be like, we'd be so bonkers. But that's because we need sleep. He didn't right. have to make us to need So he gave us sleep for a purpose. Now, we like our sleep, you know, because when yeah. you get tired, you're just so worn out and uh, you need that recharge. Um, so you have 24 hours a day and you should get about eight hours of sleep, seven or eight hours of sleep. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> well sleep, can... sleep is really a great thing. And when you read about it, like I got a book all about sleep and you find... It's really amazing, the whole science behind sleep and what God designed our bodies to do when we rest. So it's very important. You had to read a book for that, huh? Not exactly, (laughs) but maybe for some extra ammo. No, I'm sure it was a good book. I I didn't read it. Uh, I just listened to you. So anyway, um, those were the kind of the nine things we come up with. I'm sure you guys could come up with some. uh, Maybe email us, uh, maybe comment on YouTube here, a couple of the other stresses that you have come up with that... That, that we didn't mention, because I'm, I'm sure there's way more out oh, there yeah. that, that cause stress. So anyway, Joshua, why don't we uh, go ahead and end this part of it. We'll come back with uh, a, a, a finish, give more answers, give some biblical answers and mm-hmm. how we can really realistically deal with, with stress. The Mike Charleston Podcast. The Mike Charleston Podcast. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the podcast today. If you want to be a part of the show, just go ahead and email us at talk at fellowshipofbelievers.org. That's talk at fellowshipofbelievers.org. You can also visit us at the website, www.fellowshipofbelievers.org. And once again, if you do not know, you can go to uh, YouTube, just uh, look us up at Fellowship of Believers or something like that. We'll put it down in the description and go and subscribe. Thank you very much. All right, we are back, and we're going to kind of give you some answers for being stressed out. Hopefully. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are we stressed? (laughs) I am not. I'm not a real stressed out person, maybe because I have you. (laughs) But we have had issues where you come to me where you're overwhelmed, and the tendency is for me to fix everything, Hmm. and I just give you some simple answers. But honestly, my answers were pretty simple. Yeah. They were. Because my answers are just cut it out then. Let's just cut it out. Right. We're not doing that anymore then. Yeah. If, if you can't do that, then let's just not do that. 
Uh, some people are like, well, you, some things you just can't. Well, actually, there are things in life you can just cut out for a while, right. for a season. Yep. Or husband, help out, you know, or you know, don't put everything on your, your wife. But it just, I don't know of a certain specific thing, but I know it just like, that's it. We're just not going to do that then. If this is right. too much to our family, then we're not going to do X, Y, or Z. So yep. it's not that important. But anyway, like usual, we're, we're going to have like a little Charleston theater here. So I know my kids put this together. So let's see what they did. Susie, get the hammer out of your mouth. Steve, put those plates down. Kids, get out of the kitchen until I get off the phone. Hello? Hi, this is Jessica with Family Dental. I'm calling to confirm your appointment for tomorrow at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock? Are you sure? I have a co-op meeting at 10. Can I change it to 12? Um, okay, that will be fine. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bob, give that toy back to your sister. Well, have a good day. Oh, uh, thanks. Bye. What's that timer for? Oh, the bread! Well, does that sound so, like some people's <laughs> lives? Uh, if you have a family of seven kids, sometimes it can be like that, mm -hmm. huh? Yep, sometimes. And the stress <laughs> level just goes up. Well, that's why it's important to discipline your kids. And <laughs> But there, there's just some days where you're just going to have chaos. There's just a lot going on. And you just like it's too much to handle. And honestly, what we've done in the past where it's just too much, things are going on, that's when we just take a time out. Everyone go sit down. We're just going to read a book. Yep. And whatever was on, we're just going to stop because it's to, to us, that's important to just stop right. and just reevaluate what we're doing. Like, OK, let's just take a break. Mom needs a break. Dad needs a break. Everyone just come sit down, be quiet. And uh, we're going to read some books and then we'll go back with regular life. Yeah. Sometimes it's good just to just stop everything, turn off everything. Yeah, time to restart. That That actually helped a lot. I remember many times that Things were kind of getting a little chaotic, and I would tell the kids, all right, come on, let's read a book, and we'd yep. read a few books, or sometimes many, and that kind of changed the mood, and we could then, oh, okay, now what do we need to do? And yeah. The one big ways. help, though, is, and I'm not trying to push our convictions on anyone here, but we did not have the TV on. It's just no. we, don't, we, don't ha we don't do TV, so it's like it's just not running in the background. Right. Growing up, TV was on in the background. Yeah. I mean, that's just... Go to most homes today, TV is just on in the background. Now, sometimes, to be fair, I go to houses and it's on, but it's not, the noise isn't there. The huh. noise can just be the, very... Just the screen? Yeah. Weird. It's just, well, just in case, you know, I don't know. They just have the screen on. <laughs> in it's, case of what? I don't know. And usually it's a talk show, which makes <laughs> no sense. But okay. I go into many homes and that is the way it is. But sometimes it's, you got, and sometimes they go in and there's TVs with different stations going on at the same time. Wow. It's just, to me, noise level is chaos and I don't like that. Right. Now, I, I raised seven kids. And some people are like, isn't that crazy? Honestly, I remember the time we were, we were renting, looking for a rent house. Mm -hmm. And we, we had very bad luck trying to find a rent house because once they found out that we had six kids or we had five kids at the time. Five. Five, because Elizabeth was just about ready to be born. No, Joshua was just born. Yeah, well, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, she was she she was born in the rent house. But anyway, so we just had five kids, and five kids is a lot in our society, right? right. Especially young kids in 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 our rent house. So no one would let us rent the you know they wouldn't do it. nope. Once they found out we had five kids, and to me that was discrimination. But I'm not going to fight that. Right. Um, but anyway. We finally called this one guy, and I said, look, I, I'm looking for a house to rent, and uh, I mentioned a kid, and he's like, oh, so you only have one kid? I was like, well, actually, I have five kids, and he was like, oh, and I said, but they're, they're really good kids, and I just, you know, whatever. He was Iranian, so maybe he understood, you know, big family. <laughs> I don't know, but he talked to you, I think, right? Talk to me or you, I forget. And he's like, well, where are your kids right now? And I said, well, they're all right here in the living room with me. And he's like, really? I said, yes. And he's like, well, I don't hear them. And I said, well, because they're sitting here reading. I'm on the phone. I told him to be quiet. And because of that, he gave us the house. 
you know, to, when he didn't give us the house, <laughs> we, we had to nice. pay rent. <laughs> but uh, he let us move in, and I was like, oh, thank goodness for the training that we did. And uh, Or it was a very lucky day. I don't remember. <laughs> one, one quiet moment, we got <laughs> it in. Right. <laughs> but, you know, but that's what one of those things. We're just going to stop everything, sit down, and, and just chill. Right. And um, and uh, we're, we're pretty good at chilling. So, yeah. But anyway, that's beside the point. So why don't we go ahead and read this. I, I know this was kind of funny. This is You found this on the Internet, and this is kind of what is expected. The, the 2000 21 woman there's a lot to be expected from a woman right pretty much yeah um we're expected to be able to give our kids the best education maintain a perfectly clean house cook delicious and well-balanced meals do the laundry keep the kids in nice clothes without spending a fortune do all of the family scheduling be the family chauffeur volunteer at a homeschool co-op and sometimes even have a small business all at the same time that's a lot and, and there's and, more oh no, yeah sure. and, and that was just something you found <laughs> and and you added in oh and be a barber and yeah, that's right. There, there is plenty of other things. The, the responsibilities of a 2021 woman are high, especially if they are in the business world. Uh, yeah. If they don't homeschool, if they're not homemakers, right. uh, they are expected to do a lot of the things. And guys, they just don't do much. Let's be honest. They come home and watch football. They watch whatever and they, they work. I'm not saying they don't work hard, but when they come home, they seem to just sit on the couch and do nothing. That's, that's woman's work. So whether she was at work all day or not. Now that's obviously uh, changing. And now they share things that you cook tonight. And so uh, men are becoming very diverse. (laughs) You know, they're, they're, they're able to cook a little bit more and, but no, the, the, this is what is expected of a woman specifically. Now, if I went through some of the guy's responsibilities, it, it would seem like, okay, he goes to work. Then what? Well, you know, he takes care of around the house, like the outside stuff, like mowing the lawn, taking out the trash, which I don't do, and um, the kids do. But the a lot of that other outside you know, stuff is what the the... The, the husband is really supposed to take care of, but it's not really, it's all of our responsibility. My husband, my husband, <laughs> the husband's responsibility, my job right. is supposed to be to take care of the household. Now you are a help me to that. You help me with that. It's not your job. It's not all on you. Right. And guys, you need to be aware of that. You need to understand that it's not her job, even though biblically speaking, we believe that women are to be a, a, a homemaker. According to Titus 2, there is a very specific difference between men and women and specific things that women are to do to be homemakers, and you've embraced that. But that doesn't mean I just tell you to do everything, and we need to communicate, we need to work together. You are my helper, not my doer. You don't do everything, even though you do a good bit of things, right. a whole bunch of things, but you don't, you're not the one that's supposed to be in charge of all that. Yeah. So anyway, you said, is all, all stress bad? Right. Yeah. Cause that's, we think of stress in a very negative sense. Everybody's stressed out, stress, stress, stress. You hear it all the time. So no, I'm like, is it always bad? Not or always. Could there... It could be a motivator. It, right. it can be a motivator when I'm procrastinating and a deadline is up. I feel the stress. Well, that should teach me to not wait to the last minute, and it could right. motivate. You know, when you're working out, you were pointing out when you're working out, you're putting stress on your body to build strength and muscles and uh, all that stuff, right? Right. To exercise, you're actually creating stress on your body. Right. So that's a good thing good. In, in, a, in a way. Yeah. But that's not what we're talking about. Right. Most, most of the time, it's not. Most stress, when people are talking about they're stressed, isn't good. Because they're anxious. Right. They're they They're worried. Right. And, and that's not good. So yeah. anyway, what does the Bible have to say? So here's the here's the Bible segment, right? Yeah. The Bible segment. Um, what does the Bible say? You're better at reading the King James, so go ahead. Okay. So John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled. Now, we're ripping this completely out of context, but right. we do that a lot in the show. But, we, <laughs> but we're trying to keep it. In the, the the meaning of it, though, but he's going to leave us peace. He's the Prince of Peace. Right. We're not. We shouldn't be troubled. And yeah. peace to me would be the opposite of stress. When you think of peace, you think of calm, and that's not stressful. So right. Uh, the next one is Psalm one eighteen five and six. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Right. 
I will not fear. He will answer me. These are things, these are promises that God is with us. Right. We have to realize this, that God is with us. Um, So anyway, what's Psalm 55? 55, 22, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. So basically when we have troubles, when we are stressed, we can go to God and say, We can call those burdens. Right. You know, we have burdens. Sometimes we're supposed to carry other people's burdens. Right. But we give these burdens to the Lord and our burdens, he will sustain us. Right. Yep. That's a good one. And then Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes, this is one that I like. This is this is one of my this is one of my favorite ones I like to go to. Yeah. Because so many Christians out there will complain about the Christian life. How hard it is. Yes, the Christian life is so difficult. It's right. so hard. And I'm like, did you read what Jesus said? He said, "Take my yoke." Yeah. You know, give him your burdens. He he's going to be your rest. This right. is he has done everything for us. This is the, the Christian life. Now, to say that it's easy, I'm not saying it's easy because right. life isn't easy. Right. But all those things Christ took upon on him yeah. so that we could walk in newness of life. And I like what it says, take my yoke upon you. So his, uh, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Now, he is talking obviously about salvation here, right. but this works in all aspects of life that that. You are laboring and you're heavy laden, you're burdened. Christ will give us rest. He yeah. is our rest. He is our hope. So uh, go on, uh, go okay. to him. Matthew six thirty three through 34, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. This is a tough one. This is yeah. a tough one for people. Yeah. We live in America where we want things, we want stuff, we want to consume. Right. And But he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right. and all these things will be added unto you. So take therefore no thought of tomorrow. Right. Uh, think about that. How many of us are thinking about tomorrow right now? You know, like, mm-hmm. what do we got to do tomorrow? What's on the schedule? Right. Uh, what do I have to do? Or what do we, you know, I was just talking to a friend right before I got on the podcast and he wanted to come help out with the project on Thursday. I'm like, sure, come on over. I totally forgot we had other plans. <laughs> so I'm like, so I had no thought of tomorrow. So it is good every once in a while to be aware of what's going on. I so think you that don't... goes back to the planning thing. That's right. That, that was about. poor planning. Uh, but no, but sometimes we can get so worried about being able to get things done and doing all these things that we forget about that just to, to seek his kingdom right it's 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 all about his work are we doing his business first and foremost not America's business not America's right. culture not America's ex- expectations are we here to please Christ right. and and God yeah. um, so what can we do so what is the answer to this babe well there's a couple answers but I think the biggest answer would be um, we, we've talked, you've talked a lot about joy, joy and what joy does in the life of a Christian or in the life of anybody really, but especially as Christians, right. we know joy is one of the fruits of the spirit and joy will change your life. Yes. I love joy. Joy is one of my, uh, joy is not a person here, but, uh, <laughs> I love joy. Joy is because it, it, Jesus Christ has changed my life. And the first thing that was noticeable was I was happy now, I know there's difference between happiness and joy, right? Well, <laughs> if there's no happiness in your joy, you have no joy. I, I know that you're not going to be like happy when someone dies or if there's a breakup in a relationship. Right. There are moments of sadness. Right. But for the most part, we are joyful. Why? Because our sins are forgiven. Right. We are set free. We are alive unto God. We were once dead in trespasses and sins. And now we're alive to God. We right. have the God of the universe with us at all times, dwelling with us, yeah. with us and everywhere that we go and, and directing us. And the Holy Spirit is guiding us. And we, these things are good things. These right. things should make us smile and, 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 and put a smile on our face and be happy because... The, the creator of the universe, the ones that put the stars in place and the, the made all the planets out there, cares for me and you. There's a little right. speck here. Yep. He cares. Yep. So that, and I mean, when you that have make that, you happy. When you have that big yoke, that burden that you're carrying that's so heavy, and then he takes that and he gives you his, which is 
his yoke is easy, his burden is light. That's so yes, make so you happy. having having joy. Am I right there? Am I right or am I right or am I right? <laughs> you gotta you gotta be joyful. Absolutely, Abs- absolutely. So <laughs> some studies show that laughing decreases pain, may help your heart and lungs, uh, promotes muscle relaxation, and can reduce anxiety. Eh, I think we understand that. Yeah. Uh, it, it is ironic that most comedians are very depressed. Wow. They, yeah, most most wow. became, they'll, they'll, you do a study on c- comedians. Most of their lives are full of depression. It's oh. really sad, wow. um, but yet they can give happiness to other people, <laughs> right. but then themselves okay. are, are dying inside. Well, I looked up joy and stress and and like Mayo Clinic and Healthline dot com, and you know those big secular sure. websites. They had a lot to say about joy and how and happiness and how that relieves stress. And they're and not pain. even Christians, right? Has right. This to do is with... this is just hey man, uh, go to go to a comedy concert or whatever right. you know, go go yeah. make yourself happy or something like that. Right. But but in Christ, we know that Christ, our happiness comes from knowing that we're forgiven. Right. And, and I'm just going to re say what I said, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> but you know what I just said. Right. So anyway, positive emotions can decrease stress hormones and build emotional strength. Now we're not here to promote like positive thinking and we're, we're <laughs> right. Norman Vincent Peale and all that, uh, the faith teachers and all that. But there is some truth to just that you're, you're, if you're a positive person and you're, you're, and it's not hard to be positive if you're a Christian. Yeah, it shouldn't, shouldn't be. Right. It shouldn't be. Like, how's your day? I'm miserable. I, I just, I, I, if you're a complainer, then you should check your Christianity at the door because Christ brings us, you should be thankful for one. You should be yeah. just really happy because Christ has set us free. I don't know how many times I can say this. My, my yoke, my burden, my burden is gone. Christ yeah. took my burden, and now I am yoked with him, and it's easy. He says it's light. It's right. easy. Yep. So if he says it's easy and light, I want to believe him. Yep. And his life, the Christ life, is walking in that is easy. Now, it doesn't mean that things aren't going to come against me that are difficult, but I can. I don't have to stress and worry because he has everything under control, right. and I can just trust that. Yep. I can trust him. Yep, absolutely. Because he's good for it. Yep. <laughs> So anyway, so how can we find this joy? Now, th- I've been talking about this uh, for years now. It's kind of like my life message when I go and preach. I want to preach this one message on joy uh, that I have, and it's or the other one, you know, like the, one of the more important words in in out there in the Bible uh, is what like what is what is God's most powerful word out there? Love. Maybe, 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 maybe. It's a, it's a good one. But you look at the Bible and throughout all the scripture from the, the, the fathers to the prophets to Christ, all that, is that he is with us. He right. is with us. That mm-hmm. is powerful. And joy, joy in him being with us. He wants to be with us. Think right. about that. He enjoys our presence. Now, we enjoy his presence, but that's obvious. Yeah. He's God. He's, right. he's the most important, powerful being out there. We are nothing. But yeah. yet he wants to be with us. He he wants to, like we were just talking about, like, I just want to be with you. I just want to hang out with you. It makes you feel good, right? Yeah. He wants to be with us. That is awesome. Yeah. Talk to us. Spend time with us. See, that's what he wants to do. Right. So having joy and him being with us are very two important things, at least I think. But uh, so how can we find this joy? Be thankful. Be thankful. When you're thankful... That makes you happy. Yes. When you start thinking about all the things that you have to be thankful for, it's going to change your attitude. It, it is going to change your attitude. And I know this is oversimplistic, but too bad. This is very simple. The gospel <laughs> sometimes is simple. The message of Christ is simple. Be thankful. Uh, in Romans chapter 1, I know I've said this many, many times, but if you if you go down to Romans chapter 1, he's going to list a whole bunch of sins. But mm-hmm. right before he lists all those sins, he said they were neither thankful or ne- neither glorified God. So they didn't glorify him as God, and they weren't thankful. Those were the first two sins. They weren't thankful. Yeah, so big. God forbid that we, we have plenty to be thankful for. So God forbid yeah. that we, we're not thankful. Yeah. So what about direct your thoughts? Can you direct your thoughts? Absolutely. Okay. How, I mean, you can't you... help that thoughts come. And so, you know, like as a mom, the stress comes and kids are crying and there's things that need to be done. But you can think about, oh, all that I have to do and how hard today's going to be and how frustrated I am with these kids. Or you can choose Just to... do the one thing in front of you, right? Baby steps. <laughs> Baby Just steps. One step at a time. Okay, we're going to go back to what you're saying. But, but you can, you can... 
decide that you're going to think about the things that you do have to be thankful Absolutely. for. Going back to being thankful, you can... It just died. Okay. <laughs> you can... Um, you choose where you're going to take those thoughts. And are you going to dwell on all the bad and all the things that are going wrong? Or are you going to choose to think about where, where, you're, where you're headed? What are you right. doing this for? You know, we're not just here existing just for the fun of it. We're here for the glory of God. And God's given you these children so you can raise them and sh- point them to Christ. I mean, that's a lot. Yep, so. it is a, it's a huge thing. So direct your thoughts. What about consider the ravens and consider the lilies? Uh, it sounds like a, a Bible verse, huh? Yeah, so it's kind of a long one out. If you want me to read that Go ahead, thing. read it. Okay, Luke 12, 22 through 31 says, And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we kind of talked about this one. It's the yeah. same story that we mentioned in Matthew. Mm-hmm. This is just Luke. Right. But it is, it's definitely something to consider. We, we get so worried, but worrying about something, most of the time when you worry... About 90% of the time, it never happens, right. probably even more, because we worry probably about more. so many stupid things. Yeah. But we we worry about things that are just never going to happen. What if the house falls in? Well, it's not going to fall in. You know, yeah. what, right. what's the chances? Right. You know, we worry about this, that, and the other. And it's fear. Yeah. It's fear. Is God really going to be there with me? Is he going to be there for me? Is right. he against me? And yeah. once we realize he is for you, he is with you, he loves you, he wants your best interest at heart. doesn't mean he's going to... We're not talking about the health, wealth, gospel here. Right. This is just basic Christianity that he wants your good. He is for you. He's not going to just leave you out here struggling you know, with, with right. your relationships, he's not, with your family life. He's not going to just leave you out here struggling. Right. So these Absolutely. are... He is he's for us. Yep. So here we go. These are Sarah's go-to verses, right? Because let's be honest, m- most of the time, this is going to be more for women. I mean, it should be for guys too, but more women seem to be stressed out right. than guys. They, they Maybe they take life more seriously, or maybe guys just hide it better. I'm not mm-hmm. sure. But a lot of the ladies, it seems like they get to a point and they stress out. And I think m- a lot of it is because they're trying to live someone else's life. They've lost sight of their vision for their family. They've, they've mm-hmm. grabbed hold of someone else's vision, and they're trying to run with that. Right. And you're going to get frustrated, and you can't do it, or you're trying to do too much. The vision got too big. Right. <laughs> and, and it's like we, we bit off too more than we can chew here. So it's like you got to simplify things sometimes, yep. and you just got to calm down, chill to the next episode. You just got to mm-hmm. relax. And everything doesn't have to always be perfect. I mean, yes, we want to raise our kids to be obedient, sure. But, you know, your house isn't always going to be perfect. Nope. The kids, everything, your day doesn't always go perfectly, and you have to learn to relax. Roll with the punches it's sometimes. Okay. <laughs> and it's just, I know it's frustrating if, if you're trying to do something and it's not working out. But every once in a while, you have to just chill. I mean, I know I keep saying that, but it is just go meditate on the Lord, you know, meditate on his words. And here's a couple of your favorite ones, right? Yes, you, so. These are some of the things that you like to meditate on. I do. Second Peter 1, 3 says, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So yeah, I no, just... this this one, you probably needed the, the verse after it too, or before it, because it seems like it was right in the middle. Of it. But what does it say? Basically, he's given us everything we need for life and godliness. So I have everything I need. Right. So that's what he said. Right. I'm not saying that. You're not saying that. Right. God said that in right. his word. He said, we have everything that we need. Because sometimes, in Christ. you know, 
women will feel like they need more from their husbands. They need him to be more supportive. They need him to... Which is probably true. And it could be true, but you know what? But you know what? Christ is that. But God's still giving you everything you need. So what he's asking you to do, what you're supposed to do with your kids and in your home and whatever he's asking you to do, he's given you everything you need. So that has nothing to do with you. That has everything to do with my relationship with God. And then the other one I really like is um, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. Yep. And, and that's when Paul was saying, you know, take the storm in my flesh away. Right. Three times he prayed, and he said, nope, my grace is sufficient for you. And and so what do you do with that? Yeah. Wow. It's, it's his grace is, is good. It's So he is enough. Right. So even when you have sick kids and when you have a sick parent that moves in that you're going to have to take care of, and you have projects on the house that have to be done, and they have to be done now because things are falling apart, and you have deadlines, and... Whatever it is that we face, he said that his grace is sufficient. Right. So we have enough. He's given us everything we need, and he's going to be with us through whatever it is that we face. Yeah, and it, it, I don't want to belittle people's struggles. I'm yeah. really not trying to do that. But I know people will look at us sometimes and be like, how did you go through that? How did you, how did you go through the flood? I was right. like, well, you had to. Like, what do you what You do didn't you really mean? have a choice. <laughs> yeah. When you don't have a choice, it is easier. Now, maybe that's our problem in America. We have so many choices. Yeah. But when you don't have a choice, it, it, it's simple. It's like, well, what else was I going to do? Right. Right? You know, go drown myself? <laughs> it was like, well, what are you talking about? Or like when Elizabeth was born, and she was born premature, and she had to stay in the hospital, and it was touch and go. We didn't know if she was going to survive. And like people are like, well, how did you how did you deal with that? I'm like, well, what day, else what are you going to do? One day at a time. Yeah. You just keep going. So. What else are you going to do? And maybe that's overly simplistic, but I'm like, I, I just take life as it comes. And I don't question God. I don't. I really don't have a problem with how life comes. Yeah. And maybe that happened early on in my life when you know my biological dad walked out on me, and I never knew him, and I got a new dad. And I'm just like, whatever. This is my uncle's now my dad, and he wasn't really my uncle, but we just called him uncle, and now he's my dad. And so I just you just take these things as they come, and you're like, whatever. Life is what it is. It's what you make of it. That you know, like you can't control some of these things. You can't control if your house burns down. But yeah. what's your attitude in this? Is you is your hope in your house? Is your hope in all these things? Right. Well, Christ says, Jesus says, to to put your mind on the things of the kingdom mm-hmm. first. You know, put it there. Put your mind on the kingdom things. I know that it's not King James or anything, but <laughs> put your mind on the kingdom and, and do his things first, and then all these things will be added. All these things will take care of themselves. And I know that's like, oh, well, what, but practically, what does that look like? Well, practically, it means stop doing what you're doing, reevaluate your life, and say, is this important? Is it really that important what right. I'm doing? Is going to soccer that important to the grand scheme of eternity? No. no. If it means you're going to have a fight, then cut it out. Stop. Yeah. It's like if, it, if it's too much for your family, and every family is different. Maybe some families can handle more. Some families sure. can't. Yeah. But once you realize you just can't, it's too much, then at some point you've got to cut some things out and just say, this is enough. We're going to do this or maybe change it up a little bit. You've got to be fluid. Yeah. Raising a family, you've got to be fluid. You know, some of the right. single guys out there listening are like, I have no idea what you're talking about because you do everything that you want to do. You, you just listen to your own self. You do what you want to do. You, you live by your belly and you have no one to answer to. And life is good. Well, wait until you get married and have kids. Things are going to change. You have responsibilities and you have other people to take care of. That's what's going to add stress. And so you need to learn how to deal with that instead of just wife take care of it or I'm just going to go retreat into my room and go play video games or watch football or TV or whatever people do. Go out in the garage and work on my vehicle for the 15th time. Right. I got to make sure it's just tuned just right or clean my clean my car. Whatever it is that guys try to escape. That's how they deal with it. Well, unfortunately, women can't escape most of the time. Like, what do they do? Right. What do they do? Yeah. Guys won't let them escape. Right. And we can't defer, like, you know, sometimes guys can put things off a little bit, you right. know, like, oh, the grass needs to be cut, I'll maybe get to it tomorrow. tomorrow. But when you have, you know... The baby's diaper with... needs to be changed now. Right. right. And, you know, um, the mess on the floor that has to be picked. I mean, there's just too many things we can't just put off. We can't just say, well, I'll get to that tomorrow. So. No, but the, I think the real key is to enjoy the Lord. Uh, we were talking at church months ago about this, that in everything that we do... 
we enjoy the Lord's presence. We, we, we are very aware that He is with us. Uh, that is a key in our lives, that He is with us. That, that, that I'm not just saying that, like he is with us. Like I know that he is with us and that he's with yeah. me when I'm at work, when I'm at play, when I'm at home, when I'm with you, when I'm with the kids, that I am very well, well aware that he is with us, which kind of helps us with keeping from sin too, you yeah. know, but yeah. that's a whole nother subject. Um, but he is with us. And to me, that is a key thing that we enjoy his presence, that we're, we're always focused on him. We're always aware of him. So Thanksgiving is going on in our house. Right. Singing goes on in the house, uh, just sporadic singing, just out of the, out of the blue, just because we're happy. Um, you know, Bible reading, not so much anymore because Bible bees over, but the scriptures are being read. People are, are constantly aware that Jesus is in the house. Who's yeah. in the house? JC. <laughs> Jesus is in the house. And so we're enjoy his presence. Enjoy the, the kids that you have for that moment because you may not have it. Again, yeah. you, you don't know what the future is going to, to hold. You just assume that everything's going to be this. No, they're, whether they grow up 20 years and they're gone. And what right. are you going to do? You know, it's, it's so enjoy that moment that you have. Re- relax and enjoy the presence of God and just rest in him. Take his burden or not take his burden. Take his yoke and, and he'll take your burden. Right. And his burden is light. Yeah. Actually, you do take his burden, but it's a light burden right. because you know why? He did it all for us. He yeah. took, I know it's in the context of us striving and trying to earn our way to heaven and, and all that. Well, guess what? It works in every aspect. We're trying to earn something. And, and Christ is like, just relax. Yeah. Enjoy his presence. Enjoy life with, with Jesus. And when you do that, the stress level is going to be lessened. It's not going to go away completely. There's going to be stress. Right. You know, when you're preparing, well, at church, it's kind of easy because everyone's late. But uh, when you're preparing for a lot of people, that can be a little stressful. You right. know, like making sure you get all the food on time, make sure the house is cleaned and just in time for them to make it messy. And you... Sure, it's a lot and it can be stressful. But again, that's when I go back to my verses that His grace that is sufficient. His grace is sufficient and he's given me everything I need. And if I believe that, then what's that going to look like? I mean, I'm not going to be stressed out of my mind. And you know, and once again, I think to, <clears throat> you can speak on this a little bit, and I know we're, we're going over just a little bit, but it's right on time. Um, ladies, if you really are stressed out, you need to talk to your husbands about this. Guys can't, they're not mind readers all the time, yeah. or hardly at all. And communication. Communication really is good. a very good thing. If don't, and, and husbands, make it easy for them to come to you. Don't like try to fix their problems all at, at once and, and say, oh, it's no big deal, or I, I don't have time to listen to you right now. Can't you just can't you make it work today? Um, but listen to her heart. Um, figure it out. You got to mm-hmm. make it work in your house. And if she's going running to and fro and everywhere and and can't do everything well then buddy you're wearing your wife out have maybe sit down and be like this is not good i've had to stop you before and be like no 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 no. you're not going to be running around and doing everything no 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 we got it well, what's going on am i missing something which usually i was and, and be like no we're not going to do this or i'll i'm going to do this now you know i'll go and, and do this um, or you go ahead and do this and I'll make supper. It looks like it's macaroni and cheese tonight. <laughs> and so no, it's, it's guys need to step up to the plate. I think that would help out alleviate a lot of stress in ladies life. If the guys would actually step up and, and do some more around the house and just do the things that they promised to do right. and, uh, get involved a little bit more, that would actually help out the stress level. I'm sure, yeah. you know, I don't know. Look, yeah, well, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay, well, I was just say, um, I think about the what the Bible says to study. And a couple years ago, I wrote an article about being too busy. And the Bible has two times that it says study. The study to show thyself approved. Right. So and study, study to live a quiet life. Yeah, study to be quiet. Yep. And so when you look up quiet, you think peaceful, calm, not stressed. It's yeah. the opposite. So I'm like, and that's something we're told to study. So. That's uh, What verse is that? I don't remember. But it's, you can look it up. You can go to Blue Letter Bible or Bible Gateway and look up study to be quiet. Now, that's King James, but I'm sure in the other versions it's going to say something similar. Yeah. But if you look up what it means to study to quietly, you're just to, you're to study a quiet life. That's interesting. Yeah. I like that. That's yeah. uh, uh, that's good. Study to show thyself a proof and study a quiet life. Yeah. 
those are the things we're to study. Right. So what about study, that in universities? Yeah. Study is, you know, I mean, you think about that word, that's a, it means you're going to put a lot of time and try to figure out what this means. So I'm like, yeah, and, and this do. is a good subject because just to wrap it all up, because we go from godly vision all the way to stress and, and how that connects. We get so caught up in our life, and I'm going to get on my soapbox here a little bit, but we get so caught up with life that is nothing to do with God. We, yeah. we get so caught up in trying to go to a job to make money so we can pay taxes, no. <laughs> so we can pay money to live in a place, and we spend all of our time away from home so we can pay for a place that we really don't want and give things to kids that they really don't need, and we get stressed out uh, to go to to go to activities that we don't really want to go to and we don't really care about and the kids don't really care about. Like, what are we really doing here? It is, it's a big rat race that we get involved with and trying to keep up with the American culture. And it's, it's evil. Yeah. And it's it's not a quiet life. It's not a simple life. And I'm not suggesting we all go be Amish. Cause personally, that's harder. Uh, I don't <laughs> want to do all the hard work. I like some of the modern conveniences. Uh, but no. But it, it's like we. What are what is the purpose? That's why we're thinking about all these things and and going back to our godly godly culture. Mm-hmm. And what does that lead to? What do I think is important? The 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 culture of Christ. What does that look like? Does it look yeah. like being busy? Does it look like being involved in all these worldly things? Does it does it look like being being stressed out? No. I don't think so. So that's why we challenge people on these things. Think about what is important. The important things of life, first and foremost, Christ. I like that study study um to be quiet yeah. and, and study to show thyself approved. That, that's good ones to study. But those are the things that we should look into. Those are the things that we should be pouring ourselves into right. instead of just trying to make more money so we can have more things, yeah. so we can have more fun and fill that emptiness. Christ has already filled that emptiness, and, and we have that joy. I don't need vacations, even though it's nice. I don't need a, a summer home. I don't need boats. I don't need all those things to fill my happiness. I have Christ. Right. That's enough. Right. He is enough. And so anyway, yep. any last words? Relax. Relax. <laughs> chill. Yeah, I, shouldn't, I, should, him. I, I shouldn't be saying, I keep saying chill to the next episode. That, that was a saying that we had in the 90s. Chill. I think that came from Snoop Dogg, I think, so I shouldn't be saying that. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that was like chilling like a villain. And But no, but take a chill pill. Remember that one? Yeah. Take I a do chill pill. That. But uh, chilling out, you know, what we're just milling by that. You're so, you're so worked up that just relax. Right. R-E-L-A-X, relax a little bit. Sometimes it's good to just step back, yeah. reevaluate everything, and like, is this really our vision? Is this really our goal? Are we? Did we kind of lose our way? Because yeah. sometimes it happens. You right. don't necessarily mean to. Yeah. And just get back on track. So anyway, all right, I think that's good. That all was right. good. Yeah. It was a good episode. Please, if you like the show, please tell other people about it. I know that my, your sister is, is listens to the show. She's been a faithful listener from the very beginning yep. and just found out today that her husband had no idea. I know. <laughs> Matt, if you're listening, shout out. But uh, I was like, what? How, how is that even possible? So if you like the show, tell others about it. Uh, we like the show. We think it's a cool show. Um, we bring up some very interesting subjects. We bring up a lot of controversial issues. Um, we're not doing that on purpose. That's just kind of our life and much, yeah. yep so we're a little different but we're, we're we're hoping to challenge you to think differently and and if you disagree with us that's fine uh we can get along but we want to challenge your thinking to make sure that you're doing things that god would want you to do yep. that's what we do so for my wife sarah we say goodbye goodbye adios You've been listening to the Mike Charleston Podcast.